So hello, and my name is Ali Zakir. I'm a PhD candidate in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. And right now we are in the environmental lab. Today I'm just going to uh, do a, uh, some experiment related to my project that uh, is conversion of the waste, uh, such as plastics, to biofuels. With the setup that I have uh, designed and built myself, uh, it's a pyrolysis system. Uh, which actually uh, means heating a material in absence of oxygen in the elevated temperature, which uh, usually in this process we convert the waste to uh, biochar, bio oil, and biogas, and we can collect them separately. So actually the waste is completely converted to different products that uh, are considered considered as value-added products that have different applications for each of them. So for the first step, uh, so since we are focusing on plastics, I, I have prepared some low-density polyethylene, which is uh, usually used in the packaging sector, and nearly 40% of the packaging sector is LDPE, or low-density polyethylene. I have uh, washed and grounded our uh, plastic, the LDPE, to small particles. The particles that I'm using for my experiment is 500 micron. The reason that I have uh, used this particle size is for better heat transfer uh, in the process. So I just add some of uh, the plastics to this uh, crucible, ceramic crucibles. So each crucible uh, contains around three grams of uh, the plastic. So in total, since the reactor contains three of the crucibles, so we have around nine grams of the sample in each of the, pro uh, the process that I run. So we've, we have to input the, our crucibles inside our heating zone, inside the, this uh, Quartz reactor that, just for your information, quartz is a material that can resist high temperatures up to 1200. I just have to push the crucible inside the heating zone. After that, we just have to uh, close our reactor with the flanges and start purging nitrogen for at least 15 minutes to vent out the available oxygen in the reactor, so we have an uh, inert atmosphere in the, inside the reactor. So we adjust the flow meter on 500 milliliters of flow of nitrogen, and give it 15 minutes. Maybe in one glance it looks simple, but uh, for each of these parts, I, I designed them and also we purchased them from different companies. For example, this quartz tube, I couldn't find it in Canada. So it took me at least three months to just find the quartz tube for this uh, instrument. Because other, if you use either normal gl glass, because it's high temperature, it's going to crack suddenly. So from the process, sin since when the, when the devolatilization happens, we have two kind of gases evolved from our material. Uh, so there are condensable gases and non-condensable gases. So the con uh, condensable gases, which we collect them as the bio oil, should be condensed in our system. So I have a simple ice bath here that the temperature is around uh, zero up to four degrees Celsius as a condenser. And I have gas traps, two gas traps, which I have filled them with dichloromethan as an organic solvent to collect the bio oil inside uh, these bottles. So we just have to make an ice bath and add some uh, uh, dichloromethan inside our tube. So when the volatile gases passes through these uh, two gas traps, we can uh, collect the uh, condensable gases as the bio oil. And from the other end, the non-condensable gases which are as the biogas are collected 
in a tedler uh, gas box. Then uh, by having the bio oil and biogas, we can do the analysis. So the analysis for the uh, bio oil is with the gas, gas chromatography uh, mass spectrometry, and for this one is with the GCTCD. Okay, so pyrolysis is affected by different parameters. One of them was the particle size of the material that we have to input in a reactor. For the reactor itself, so the final temperature, the heating rate, and also the dwell time of our process is important uh, parameter that, that requires uh, optimization. For instance, for this uh, run and process, I'm going to uh, fix the heating rate to 30 degrees Celsius per minute and adjust the final temperature to 550 degrees Celsius. And when it reaches uh, the 550 degrees Celsius, we're going to give it the one hour for the complete uh, the devolatilization process. So these adjustments are based on the optimization and the thermogravimetric analysis that has been done uh, prior to this experiment. So I evaporate the dichloromethan. So at the end, what is left uh, is just the bio oils. I collect the oils, and then they have, I have to take them for the analysis with the GCMS to see the compounds. For example, as I mentioned, the number of carbons and different elements that are inside the composition of the bio oil. What exactly do you have? So the biogas that has been uh, vented out from the condenser has been collected in these uh, Tedler gas bags. We collect these uh, biogas for the analysis, and we uh, need to analyze this uh, biogas with gas chromatography again. So yeah, we just collect them in these gas bags. The reason we do that, because we, our aim is to see, produce more syngas, like carbon monoxide and hydrogen and methane, instead of greenhouse gases, such as uh, carbon dioxide. So we, so we have to analyze this and to see and measure how much greenhouse gases that uh, we have produced from the process. And the condensed oils are trapped in the bottles. Because this was the first bottle, so it has collected more, most of the volatile has been collected in the first bottle, just but I put the second bottle too, just to be sure some of the research is related to yield, but mine, because it's more related to the composition and the quality of the bio oil, so even uh, this amount is enough for the analysis. So after uh, collecting the bio oil, we just have to heat to just remove the dichloromethane, and then put them in uh, small bottles for further analysis with the GCMS. Which stands for what? Uh, gas chromatography mass spectrometry. So this is uh, our final product, the, uh, the bio oil, which has been, the dichloromethane has been removed. So this is our final uh, product, the bio oil, which can be substitute of the crude oil that actually has uh, so many environmental pollution and the growing of the population and the industrialization. Uh, in the future, we will have a lack of uh, crude oil. So this is a solution, not only targeting the waste management and uh, removing the plastic waste from the environment, but actually producing a valuable product that has different applications in the industry.